Assalamu alaikum. Today I want to speak about the daughter-in-law, the negatives at times. And please listen to this because people say you don't talk about it. That's not true. I do. At times you have a marriage. As I said previously, people are happy. Everyone's excited. The marriage happens and here comes the beautiful daughter-in-law into the home. She comes, if she were to come, subhanallah, with a bad mouth, screaming, yelling, shouting, swearing, abusive, and just being a big boss trying to change the entire home and house and trying to take the child away from the parents because now that's my husband and that's it. My beloved child, my dear sister, subhanallah, as much as that's your husband, those are his parents. Try to be respectful. Try to understand them. Let's have a beautiful relationship. Try to be a person who fits in to the system. And yes, if adjustment is required, you can make an adjustment and so can he and so can a few of the others. But a little adjustment here and there, nobody minds, especially when it is appreciated and when it's not demanded with a big fuss that's made because of that. Let's try to be more respectful. Imagine someone comes into the home and next thing, everyone starts fighting because of that person. That's not good enough. When we enter a home, we should be complementing what's happening in that home in terms of good. We should be fitting in in a nice way as best as possible. And yes, you are entitled to your separate quarters. That's something that everyone knows. But even if you have your separate quarters, you cannot deny your husband his relationship with his parents. Sometimes I do know parents overdo it. In fact, I will speak about a problem that we've been facing of late where some of the sons are so close to their mothers that even during moments where she's not dressed appropriately, etc., they would still go in and sit with her. And uh, recently I heard of someone who actually, astaghfirullah, uh, sleeps with their own mother in the same bed and that's wrong subhanallah that is wrong I mean you're an adult man you're not supposed to be doing that even though that's your own mother and she's a mahram but that's that's more haram than anything else may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us so that having been said on one hand the other what we need to realize is please humble yourself I've said this so many times it's not impossible when you're getting married, you're going to have to sacrifice. I think one of the biggest sacrifices ever is getting married. Sometimes it's a bit less because of the easygoing people you married into. But at times people who came across easygoing during your days when you still didn't uh, marry uh, are not really so easygoing once you've married because everything changes. They expect from you certain things. And you know what? You're not going to just sit back and relax as you did in your father's home. You're going to have to get up and do some work, but let it be balanced. I've spoken in the past about abusing the daughters-in-law, but now I want to speak about how sometimes the daughters-in-law expect so much. And it's not fair. Who's going to do the work? Who's going to do the cleaning? Who's going to do everything? You need to talk about it because if nobody's going to do it, then you're just going to be living in a sty. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Some countries, people can afford a helping hand. Other countries, they cannot. In some circumstances, people could afford more than others. But remember, when we get married, there needs to be the preparedness for sacrifice on all sides and adjustment on all sides and respect on all sides. And inshallah, in that way, we would definitely be able to have a much better home by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're accustomed to sleeping up to 10, 11 every single day, when you marry, that's going to change in most cases. In most cases, it's going to change. You're going to have to get up at 6, 5. You're supposed to have gotten up for salah anyway. So if you're used to sleeping after that, sometimes you may marry and after that, you won't have sleep after salatul fajr for whatever the reason may be. So try and understand this, my brothers and sisters. And inshallah, in this way, we would definitely be able to build a much better home. And we would learn to respect each other, sacrifice for each other, sacrifice for family members. It doesn't mean that your mother-in-law is a bad person. She's not necessarily a bad person. Most mothers-in-law out there are actually lovely individuals. They're lovely people. You need to learn to win the hearts of others, both ways, inshallah. 
and respect each other, help each other, treat each other like you belong to each other. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Just the thought of it must be really difficult upon some. But inshallah, it's good advice. It's good advice. Try to resolve your matters. And don't carry tales from here to there. Because sometimes if you're going to say everything that has happened in your, in your husband's house back to your own home, you might confuse your family. They may not know. Uh, they may process it wrongly. They may think it's bigger than it actually is. But if there is a problem, yes, you need help. And if you need that help, get it. And the best people to get it from, your family. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us and grant us beautiful homes. Aqulu qawli hadha. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.